Max, thank you, sir. For our Focus at Four, we're talking about chaos at the carnival. Two police officers were hurt Saturday night at the Post Oak Mall's carnival after a large fight that turned into what many have called a riot. There was a 13, a 14, a 15, a 16, and a 17-year-old who were all taken into custody that night. Lieutenant Steve Brock with the College Station Police Department is here to talk about what happened Saturday night at that carnival at the mall. Let me first ask you, Lieutenant, how were the officers doing? You two officers who were hurt, but nothing serious. Uh, they're both doing fine. Okay. Good news is uh, they didn't miss any work either. Didn't, uh, did not need any uh, medical treatment at a hospital or anything. We had one officer punched in the throat and another officer that was kneading the mouth, but both of them are okay. We invited Lieutenant Brock on to talk about this because there were there was such a large response from people. A lot of parents concerned about public safety at that carnival at, at the mall. What happened there? You're talking about a group of, of teens, young people who were fighting, and then it turned into just chaos. Well, I'll be honest with you, Rusty. It, it, it is a bit of an anomaly for this area. We don't really have to deal with uh, riotous behavior like that. Um, we had our typical off-duty security there uh, as manned by call station police officers. Uh, historically, we had the same number of officers that we've had um, in the past. In the carnival's been coming for, what, multiple years right. now. So we have a template. We send the appropriate amount of officers. We've never really had an issue like this. So we had the, the same number of officers that night. Those officers ended up having to break up several fights throughout... Um, the evening and then specifically towards the end of the night around 10:45 or so there was a fight between two female juveniles and the officers went in to break that up and uh, one of the females started to resist and end up kneeing one of our officers in the mouth and then one thing led to another then there was another fight another officer was uh, trying to provide security and he ended up getting punched in the throat and um, it started to escalate and it started to uh, increase in uh, in its violence and uh, in numbers as well, so several and the, teenagers. And that's the yeah. difference here. A lot of people talk about, okay, well, we've you go out to these things, there's always these fights between teenagers, kids are going to be kids, but there's the difference here. The difference here is these teenagers and up to it, that you had a thousand in this crowd, started turning against officers. That's that's ridiculous. It It is. that uh, You don't see that type of defiance here in, in Brazos County usually. It uh, It's very disheartening. Uh, you know, our officers got surrounded. Uh, Juveniles started to throw cups of liquid and things into the crowd towards the you officers. You had some pointing like this to some of the officers' heads saying, we're going to do this. Right. And, you know, you hate to see that. And, you know, unfortunately, I think it's become popular to be defiant with police officers right now. And uh, we usually just don't deal with that in this community. It, it was a shocker to us as well, that type of just straight out defiance towards authority. And we're talking about teenagers here. What's the message that the police department wants to put out to the parents of those teenagers, to those teenagers? How do you prevent something like that from happening again? Well, I think it takes good old fashioned parenting and sitting down with their children and, and basically telling them, um, you know, police officers or authority figures, if they tell you to do something, you should obey them. Because I can tell you from experience, we are asking or ordering um, people to do something for a specific reason, and usually it's to protect them. So if we are asking them to leave or to step over or do whatever it is, it's for their own safety. So we would hope that parents would reinforce the fact that they need to submit to that authority. And we would also ask that, uh, you know, at the carnival, um, some parental guidance, some good old fashioned parental guidance may have uh, deterred what happened, or at least plucked some of the kids out and said, we're leaving. We are not going to do Because you had a lot of people who were just dropping kids off and then taking off. That right. Was... And, and according to our officers, the, the majority of that group appeared to be unsupervised young teenagers, 13, 14, 15-year-olds that just got dropped off at the carnival. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't happen often, but at times when you get a large group like that, all it takes is a few ringleaders to show that type of defiance towards police officers, and then it gets catchy. And then you have one turn into 10, to turn into 20, then to turn into a It turned into 1,000. Your officers, because you only had, you had 20 police officers from College Station, you had some backup from uh, surrounding agencies, right. but you're talking about 1,000 people who were surrounded. Your officers showed a lot of constraint that night, you in know, my opinion. They, they did. 
You know, I, I got to tell you, the officers that were on scene there and then the backup that showed up between our on-duty officers, Bryan Police Department, University Police Department, and the Sheriff's Department showed great restraint in how they handled that and the <clears throat> amount of force that they ended up using. They, they used only the amount of force that it took to take control of the uh, unruly juveniles. And, uh, you know, if you start to, uh, ask, you know, increase your level of force at times, that could, that could return to you worse, from yeah. a group tenfold and it, it just makes it worse. It's adding fuel to a fire. I've got to wrap this up, but for those parents who are watching this and saying, you know what, this carnival happens next weekend also, I, I don't want to send my kids out there. It's, it's scary. What do you, what, how do you respond to that? Um, I would tell you that uh, this is an anomaly. This isn't something that we deal with. We have increased security there in partnership with Right Amusement. They are very much uh, working with us for a solution to this. Uh, we believe it's safe, but we would also say come and enjoy it as a family, parents and children together. Don't just drop your children off um, for the carnival staff and for the police department and its officers to look after. Come enjoy it as a family. It will be safe. Lieutenant Brock, I appreciate you coming on and talking about this. We have reached out to Post Oak Mall and the amusement company that puts this on. They have not responded to any of this, but you guys have, and so we definitely do appreciate it. And, Thank and you, Rusty. It's a pleasure to have you in the studio. Hey, we're going to do more right after this.